Hey, it's great to be with you today. We're in Luke chapter 4, and we're going to start in verse 16 today. So if you have your Bibles, please open to Luke chapter 4, verse 16, where the Bible says, He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, really important phrase right there, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Now, um, just a great thing for you to continue reading there later on, maybe today, uh, into verses 17 to 19. A very significant moment for the ministry of Jesus as he starts here in the synagogue in Capernaum and he is reading from Isaiah chapter 40, what we know as Isaiah chapter 40. And it's a beautiful messianic portion of scripture that talks about um, all, all that the Messiah is going to do through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Very significant portion of scripture. It was a public declaration in particular when he said to them, today this is fulfilled in your hearing. So really big um, moment in the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ. We're not focusing on that today though. And um, we're gonna focus on something probably a little more subtle, a little more nuanced. And, and it's this, the Bible says that Jesus went to the synagogue on the Sabbath as was his custom. So there was this consistent regular thing that Jesus did uh, on what would have been Friday night, Saturday, uh, in the Jewish world at that point in time, on the Sabbath. And, um, you know, he was with the people of God, and they were having time with God. Now, I know that some people would say, well, you know, he was a good Jewish boy. Of course, this was what he did. It was part of the culture. Everybody, you know, everybody was engaged in this type of religious activity. And then there might be others who say, well, this was just, you know, religious activity. And so there's really nothing significant about it. But for sure, it was significant for the Lord. It was his custom um, to, number one, have intimacy with the Father. And it was his custom to have community with the people of God. That's what the word synagogue means. It really does mean community with each other. And those two things were so important to Jesus. Today we're just going to focus on we're going to focus on intimacy and we're going to save the community piece for another time. As you look at the gospel accounts and as you read the stories, I know probably uh, for you as it often is with me, it's it's particularly amazing to watch Jesus do miracles and to reach people, particularly the marginalized and those who've been cast off by the religious leaders. And we're gonna to get to that in uh, Luke's gospel account. In fact, in just in the next couple of days, some great, great stories. But I think sometimes in all of that, um, all the exciting works that Jesus did, all those um, marvelous things that sometimes we ourselves associate with, right? We put ourselves in the position of that person who's being reached out to by Jesus and healed and rightfully so. Um, but before all of that, before the actions, before the acts, before the marvelous miracles, it's just good to remember that he always prioritized intimacy with the Father. Like that before anything else. Number one in the life of Christ. And you know what? You can, you can read through the gospel accounts and, and do the study yourself. Just consider how many times... Uh, Jesus was praying to the Father, speaking to the Father. We're going to see this in a couple of days. Getting isolated time in prayer with the Father, separating himself from the busyness of his life, and really leaning into intimacy with God. This was his heart, right? I mean, he always did those things that pleased God, but he was always connected to the Father. And he was doing things, right? He was actively doing things that connected him uh, to the Father. And, you know, Jesus did this because this is the eternal relationship that the Father, the Son, and the Spirit always had. He loved the Father, like I said. He also did this as a pattern for us to emulate. You see, just as intimacy with the Father was priority for the Son, Intimacy with the Father should be priority for us, those of us who are the children of God. Like before the act, before the action, before the use of the spiritual gift, before we engage in all the doing. And I don't, I don't know about you, but sometimes I can get really focused on all of the doing. But before all of that happens, what needs to happen first is just sweet, intimate time with God the Father. This really does need to be our pursuit. And if we're going to pursue it, 
the right way, you know that it takes time. Now, how we spend that time and the motivation behind the time for sure is important, but you know you won't get there. You won't get to intimacy unless you make the space for it. Obviously, you're doing that. I mean, here you are, you're watching a devotion. Probably your Bible's open, you, whether it's a Bible like this or on your phone, and so your heart's already leaning into that. I just want to encourage you to lean into it more. Thank God for the steps of faith that you've taken, but lean into it more because there is nothing as sweet as those intimate, private moments that God gives to you. You know, I'm privileged to have the opportunity to see God do so many things through this church and through our ministry team. Extraordinary things, you know, people being saved every weekend and uh, crusades and church plants and so much activity. But I can sincerely and honestly say to you today that the sweetest moments in my life, while those are amazing and they really do bring me to a place of awe in all that God can do. But the sweetest, the sweetest moments in my life um, have always been those personal, private, intimate moments with God where my spirit has connected to, to Him and I've sensed His presence in my life and His hand on my heart and His voice in my ears. You know, there's, there's nothing like it. And I just, you know, I don't want to put words in Elijah's mouth, but you know, Elijah saw so many amazing things and I just wonder, you know, on that day when we have the opportunity to talk to him, if, if it's not going to be, hey, you know, Mount Carmel was amazing, but Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai, when he called me out of the cave and he spoke to me in the still small voice, there was nothing that compared to that. May God bless you with times of great intimacy with him as you really do lean in and carve out the time and make the space. Father, thank you. We pray that as we do make time for you, that you, God, would fill that time with yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day.